Tonight on UC Sports, the UConn women's basketball team stays winning as they head into the Elite Eight, and Danny Hamilton might go into the NBA draft and some upsets in the NCAA tournament that could affect your bracket. You got that right. We also got some UConn baseball and softball news coming at you from over the weekend, along with women's lacrosse, who just defeated Villanova in their first conference game of the season. You don't want to miss this edition of UC Sports coming at you right now. everyone and welcome back to UC Sports. I'm Justin Ayer alongside the ever so dapper Brandon Martinez. For those who celebrate it, I hope you all had a happy Easter. I know I ate enough food to last me until next Easter probably. Brandon, how was your weekend? It wasn't bad. I mean, Easter better didn't come and visit me or anything. A lot of, a lot of homework this weekend, but I mean, I'm glad everyone else had a, or I hope everyone had a great Easter. Yeah. So, without further ado, Justin, how do we get right into it? Let's do it. Let's start with the UConn's women basketball team. The UConn's women team steamrolled over Mississippi State this past Saturday to win their 72nd straight game. Leading the charge was Brianna Stewart, who recorded a double-double with 22 points and 14 rebounds. Katie Lou Samuelson scored 21 points and became the third UConn freshman to have two 20-point games in NCAA games, joining the likes of Stewart and Maya Moore. This win also ties, tennis, ties Tennessee for the longest winning streak in NCAA for 21 straight wins. Tonight, the Huskies will play the Texas Longhorns for a chance to go to the Final Four as the Lady Huskies chase history and a fourth consecutive national championship. So we all know what's going on with UConn basketball. Kansas gave them a run for their money. They lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament. But here's the newest news. You may or may not have heard it. Daniel Hamilton, the UConn sophomore guard, superstar in this year's AAC tournament, has declared for the NBA draft. Now, this has been causing a little bit of noise. It's possible that he could be testing waters because he did not hire an agent, per his mom, by the way, and there's still time for him to withdraw his name. May 25th is the withdrawal date. He's 20 years old, 6'9", 178 pounds, and clearly was a large offensive factor for the Huskies this season, especially come tournament time. But is he ready? He can still come back. That's the question. And in the madness of March, four more teams fell, three of which were number one seeds. In the South, number two Villanova took out the number one overall seeded Kansas, while number two Oklahoma defeated number one ranked Oregon in the West. The biggest shocker came when number 10 seeded Syracuse overcame a 16 point deficit, stunning number one ranked Virginia in the Midwest. Number one, ranked, uh, number one North Carolina easily handled number six seed Notre Dame in the East, setting the stage for the Final Four in Houston, Texas. The Final Four now has the number two ranked Villanova and Oklahoma facing off, and Cinderella Story Syracuse will go against North Carolina. And my sincerest condolences to those of you with busted brackets, and for those of you who correctly predicted the Final Four, you're going to be picking my lottery numbers from now on. Well, we're just going to go to a quick commercial break. Stay, stay here, guys. We'll be back with UC Sports. to the baseball field. The UConn baseball team, who is currently sitting at 11-11 as an overall record. The team just finished up a doubleheader versus Columbia this past weekend right here at home. The Huskies topped the Lions 3-0 in Game 1 before sealing the game series of victory with the 4-3 in Game 2. So let's talk about it. Game 1, UConn's left-handed pitcher Tim Kate 
fired six scoreless innings, only allowing three hits and a career-high 11 strikeouts. Patrick Rutolio grabbed two innings of scoreless relief. The pitching staff racked up a total of 15 punchouts. Neither team broke out onto the scoreboard until the seventh inning when junior Keith Kruger and Jack Sumberg, the senior co-captain, singled with two outs. And to wrap it up, senior Brian Danelio lifted an RBI single straight into left field right before the Huskies pushed two more runs across an error by the second baseman to secure a 3-0 win. And on to game two, Ronnie Rizamando, freshman right-handed pitcher and Connecticut native. Ronnie only allowed one run and had five strikeouts this game. W Willis Montgomery and Randy Polinia also saw some pitching time this game. This game was quite the nail-biter for the Huskies. Columbia jumped out to a 3-0 lead before Connecticut grabbed a run following a back-to-back -back base knocks from John Tapa. Redshirt junior catcher Alex LaFerve paced the offense with a 3-for-3 game, registering his third RBI of the 2016 campaign, while infielders Aaron Hill and Connor Buckley, all from Connecticut by the way, registered crucial RBIs for the win of 4-3. The team will continue their non-conference play on Tuesday, March 29th, as they travel to Boston College. The UConn softball team lost their last game of their three-game series against the AAC rival Memphis Tigers by a score of 2-1 on Saturday. Junior pitcher Kayla Dotti, who took the mound for her only her seventh start, left the game with another L in the column, despite only allowing two runs on seven hits in seven innings. Senior Alyssa Gardia scored the only run for the Huskies on an in-the-park home run set up by a Memphis throw error. The Huskies dropped to 11-20 and, and are 1-2 and two in conference play. They will host a doubleheader against Bryant University on Tuesday for their home opener at Burrell Family Field. Villanova may be making some noise in college basketball, ruining many brackets throughout the country, but when it comes to women's lacrosse, that is a whole different story. The UConn women's lacrosse team battled a 3-0 deficit against Villanova and took a 13-8 victory on Saturday in its first home conference game of the season. The Huskies are sitting pretty at 7-1. Kelsey Catalano, a midfielder from Stony Brook, New York, was the superstar of this contest. She scored four goals, followed by seniors Catherine Finkelston, Allison Fazio, Grace Nolan, and freshman Brooke Jensen, who netted two crucial goals late in this game. And late is definitely the consensus of this one. The Wildcats put up three unanswered goals to start the game, while the Huskies did not get on the board until over 15 minutes had expired on the clock. Tied at 6-6, six and six, with seven minutes left in the second half, UConn just went on a tear. The team scored six unanswered goals to pull away 12-6. With five minutes to go, the Wildcats scored their last goal of the game, while UConn finished it up, tucking in another UConn goal by Alexa Bonds, ending the game at 18-8. The Huskies hit the road for a weekday matchup with Syracuse this Wednesday. Now, Brandon, before we wrap it up tonight, we got to talk about something that's clearly been on my mind and a lot of UConn basketball fans. Dan Shaughnessy from the Boston Globe and a few, a few other reporters as well have been saying that UConn's dominance is just bad for the sport of women's basketball. In fact, Dan tweeted the other day talking about how the Huskies just defeated Mississippi State by 60 points and that they're killing the sport of basketball. Will he want to watch the game? He said no. What do you have to say about this? I mean, this is kind of ridiculous. Oh, no, I agree. It's completely ridiculous. I mean... It's women's basketball. UConn right now is just at the cream of the crop right now. They have the best players, the best coaching, and it's just um, right now everyone, UConn is the team that everyone is aspiring to be. Yep. Other teams just have to build from that and look at them to see, hey, what are they doing? What, you know, what can we do to be like UConn? So I don't think it's ruining the game. I think it's making the game better. And it's just amazing to see what UConn can do, like going far and like going on this huge winning streak. Mm -hmm. I just think it's amazing, and I just want to see how far they can go. And I just think that makes the sport more exciting. Yeah. I don't think it ruins the game at all, to be no, honest. Absolutely, and Gino, he wasn't even too happy. Here's what he said. Now, this is, quote, when Tiger Woods was winning every major, nobody said he was bad for golf. Actually, he did a lot for golf. He made everyone have to be a better golfer, and they did. And now there's a lot more great golfers because of Tiger. And 
UConn women's basketball is the same thing. And here's what he also said. If you don't like it, don't watch it, plain and simple. And you know what? I know I couldn't agree more with the Hall of Fame coach. What do you think? Gino, Gino, Absolutely. Gino. I don't know. I mean, I agree. I, exactly what he said. Tiger Woods, best golfer for a long time. No one said he was bad. Yeah. UConn, UConn women's basketball is just the best basketball yeah. out there right now. And they're doing the same exact thing. Exactly. Making the sport that much better. Yep. With that said, we are going to wrap it up tonight. Feel free to follow us on Twitter at UCTV Sports for all live game updates, as well as follow us on YouTube at the UCTV Channel 14. For Brandon Martinez, I am Justin Ayer, and we'll see you all next week. Have a great night.